What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is Married at First Sight, season 14, episode 4. I can't believe we're on episode 4 already, and we ain't even at the honeymoon yet. Well, we do get to the honeymoon this episode. But listen, y'all, I'm over this season already, okay? I am so not here for Alyssa, and I am really trying my best not to call that woman out her name. But baby, by the end of this episode, I was so hot like grease fire, okay? Listen, let me just rewind this tape. Let me start with I feel like is the least pro problematic couple, and then I will work my way up. So let's start with, um, so this is the, the morning after the the wedding, and you know that they all have to go and have breakfast, lunch, brunch, whatever, with the opposite, with the opposite family. So I, I, I'm not going to, you know, get into every single thing, but let's get into some of the highlights. So we have, um... Even though, okay, I said I was going to go with the least problematic, but that's not true. I'm just going to start where I start. So we have um, Lindsay and um, Mark. Mark, right? Yeah, because it's Chris and Alyssa. Yeah, Lindsay and Mark. Now, yeah, Mark the shark. Yep, Mark the shark. So that morning, they have a, a really honest conversation about their mothers. And we get a little more information about Mark's mom because early on, we knew that she was in rehab. But, I mean, I wasn't sure, was it rehab? Like, did she have a really bad fall and she was in some sort of rehab and she wasn't healing as fast as she should have and and or wasn't doing what the doctors told her to do? Was she in rehab for some sort of substance abuse? Rehab can be a lot of things. But we find out that she has fallen into a really, 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 really bad and debilit debilitating depression. He said that when she retired, she stopped getting dressed. She stopped dressing and you know, wouldn't want, wouldn't leave the house, wouldn't go anywhere. And then when his dad passed away, it just became bad. And, you know, she says she wants help, but then she never really follows through and, and things like that. And so Lindsay talks about her mom and how, you know, her and her mom just have a really bad relationship and how her mom was like, I don't know if I'm coming to the wedding. And she like emailed family about her not coming. And Lindsay was like, fine, then just don't come. So let me say this. At the beginning of this, I was like, dang, that's messed up. She's not even going to go to her own daughter's wedding. But the more I get to know Lindsay, the more I feel like that situation has so many layers to it that it would be unfair for me to just be like, oh, that's messed up. That's your daughter. You should have just went to her wedding. Because I feel like there are a lot of layers to that relationship. And we see that Lindsay can be very challenging. Okay. Um, Lindsay went to lunch, brunch with... Mark's friends and you know they were like well you know Mark you know he just basically he needs a little guidance you know um he, he's gonna need your help and I feel like that was the wrong thing to say to Lindsay because she already was treating him like he was a damn child that morning talking about what he could and couldn't eat and what he should and shouldn't be eating and I'm like listen that's your husband not your not your not your child you know, when it was time for them to start packing for the honeymoon, you know, she's telling him that he can't wear sweat, sweatpants to the airport. I, I beg your damn pardon. Let me tell you something. When I travel, I travel as comfortable as possible. I know back in the day, people used to dress up to get on the plane, and it was like, wear your Sunday's best. But, baby, I am not her, and she is not me. And when I get on the plane, especially if I'm getting on a long flight, oh, baby, I'm putting on some sweats. I'm going to put on some slides if I if I feel like it because, you know, you got to take your shoes off at the airport. Baby, I'm going to be as comfortable as I choose to be. And when I get where I'm going, I will get to the airport, I mean, the hotel, and take me a shower and put my real clothes on if that's what I need to do. But anyway, um, he met with her family, and, you know, her family basically was like, yeah, bruh, he your, she your problem now. <laughs> They ain't gonna give him a no button, like the, the Staples easy button. They gonna give him a no button and be like, you might need to use that with her when, you know, she starts getting a little, a little extra, a little out of control, right? So then we have, um, we have Jasmina and Mike. Now, um, I'm, I feel like right now they're our least, our least problematic couple I feel like the problems that they're gonna have are gonna be your natural problems that you have when you marry somebody you don't fucking know um she met with his family and his sisters were basically saying that he's a pessimistic person he sees the glass as the hat as a, he sees a glass as half um empty instead of half full and you know that you know he could be a little pessimistic at times and of course that immediately 
um, turned her off because she was like, I just think that's bad, that's terrible, that he would see things as negative and would always be looking for things to be wrong and for the, the shoe to drop kind of thing. So then, um, but her and the sisters got along so well, they really bonded, and I thought that was really, really sweet. Um, girl, they asked if the marriage was consummated, and let me explain something. We ain't never going to be them kind of sisters, okay? Okay. She, now, Mike met with um, with her family, and, you know, her mama was just not here for it. Her mother was like, listen, you might be a really, really nice person, but here's my problem. I don't know that. I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. I don't know if you're a nice person or not because I don't know you, and I'm not sure and if I'm ready to trust my daughter with somebody I don't know. Um, I can appreciate that her. I can appreciate her honesty and that she wasn't bullshitting the situation. But the flip side of it was like, dang, mama. <laughs> but I was here for it. And I, I think Mike understood it. I think Mike was kind of like, damn, woo. But I think he understood it. Um, Steve and um, Noy. Um, let me say this. So Noy's um, brother showed up as um, his alter ego, Shirat, Sriracha. And what I don't know is if, he just likes to dress in drag or if he is actually in the process of some sort of um, transition. So I want to be disrespectful, not sure what the pronouns are. So because um, she, she showed up as Sriracha, we are going to use the female pronoun, okay? Okay. So Sriracha was like really coming for him, I feel like. You know, I feel like there was a really hard conversation about him having a job. But I think it needed to be had because let's be clear, Steve, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt, sir, and I was kind of defending you a little bit. But then when you were talking to Noy later on in the episode and she asked you about a job situation and your attitude was, well, I mean, I think we need to figure out what it is that we're going to do and that'll determine whether I decide to get full-time employment. So how about that shouldn't be an option? Unless you are independently wealthy and you have money stacked up in the bank that I don't know nothing about, having a job is not an option. Now, if you can pay your bills and you have some sort of income that is coming in, then listen, I'm good with it. I'm not one of those people that feel like you need to work just to work. If you can take care of your bills and you can do all of that and you can take care of me too and the, the lifestyle in which I have become accustomed, then cool. You don't need to work. But I know he does some, um, I know he does some, um, um, freelance. So he's bringing in some sort of paycheck, but baby, mm -mm. so I wasn't here for that. So when Noy was meeting with his family, his family kind of was like, listen, Steve kind of is a fly by night kind of guy. You know, he kind of goes with the flow and you know, that don't bother you that he don't have no job. And I was like, anytime... The family is kind of giving you the, you know, he don't have no job, right? You might want to take heed to that a little bit. You might want to, uh, you know, you might want to be. Uh, uh. So there was that. So then we had um, Elijah Wan and um, Elijah Wan and um. Oh, shoot. Why? Kate, Kate, Caitlin? Kate, Kate, Kate. Elijah Wan and his wife. So she met with his mama. Baby, his mama was like, listen, I bought you some presents. Go on and open up them presents because I got to get ready to go to work. Baby, she then gave her the shirt and the pom-poms that she used to wear to his games. And she was basically like, you his chili to now. I get a job to you. You good? You got it? Okay, I'm on my way to lunch. I, I mean, on my way to the work. I said, Basically, her thing was, he belonged to you now. That's how I took that. I took that as, oh, he your problem now. <laughs> That's how I took it, okay? Now, Elijah Wan met with her friends. Baby, her male friend was not here for it. Her male friend was like, yeah, I'm not sure if he is here because he really here or if he here to, to try to be seen because I, I, I just get, you know, I want to be the center of attention. I'm trying to get my 15 minutes all up and through this. Like, that's how I feel about this, right? All up and through this. Um, and it got a little spicy a little bit. Just a, a little spicy. All right, so those are the other couples. Now, listen, 
If I had to rank the couples, like I said, I think Jasmine and Mike are probably my least problematic. And here's our most problematic, Alyssa and Chris. And let me say this. This is how I feel about the Alyssa and Chris situation at this point. Married at first sight. I know we're making a TV show. I get it. I got it. I understand. We are making a TV show. These people signed up for these things. I get it. Um, but I feel like when you realize that somebody is not here in good faith, I just feel like there should be an out clause. Um, and I, I really feel like after two episodes, because we really didn't see, like, they're new. They, they were the last couple to get married. So the first two or three episodes don't really count. But after two episodes, which is essentially four hours of footage, I honestly feel like y'all should let them out of this. Annul it, move on, write it up as an L, and, and, and keep it moving. Y'all did it with Paige and Chris. Y'all let them stop filming. I know what we're trying to do. Like, I get it that we're trying to make a move. A move I get it. But I feel so bad for Chris. So we know that Alyssa wouldn't stay in Chris, the room with Chris. So the next morning, she comes to talk to him. And she gives him this big speech about some things were said that made her uncomfortable. And she, he was like, well, well, we found out they had a conversation at 2 o'clock in the morning off camera. And I feel like that's what she wanted to begin with. I feel like she never wanted to talk to him on camera because she doesn't want to look like the bad guy. I also feel like the minute she turned that corner and saw Chris standing there, she decided she was out. She wasn't interested. She wasn't attracted to him. And she wasn't interested in getting to know him. When they talked after the they exchanged vows and he started talking about disc, uh, uh, frisbee, golf, or whatever the hell it is he plays and all of that, I think that she just decided. And the 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 the, the icing on the cake was when he said when his friends were like, "Well, you know, Chris can be a little condescending at times, and you know, he always wants to feel like he's teaching somebody, but he doesn't mean any harm by it. He just always thinks he's the smartest guy in the room." Listen. That can really be annoying. But here's what I, here's where my problem is. Don't, don't persecute him for something he hasn't done yet. His friends have a perception of him and he may very well end up doing that to you. But I feel like she took that and she used that as the excuse to get out of the marriage that she already didn't want to be in. Because this man has done nothing to you. This man has done nothing for you to treat him the way that you are treating him. So she's sitting here giving him this whole speech about how they're just not compatible. And, you know, at this point, she just wants to finish going through the process as friends. I didn't marry a friend. Like, I got friends. I don't need no more damn friends. And that's where I feel like, and I'm not saying that none of this happened because, child, Lord knows I don't know what happened behind closed doors. But at this point, I feel like the conversation needs to be, Either you are going to fully participate in all aspects of what you signed up for, or we, we're going to leave your ass here in Boston. We're going to compensate Chris however we need to compensate Chris, and i see you next lifetime, right? Because, um, and of course he's really trying, but he's like, so he went to meet with her family, and he told her family, listen, she said she wasn't really feeling me, and she wasn't comfortable with me, and so things aren't really going that well. Now, when she went to meet with, with his family, I mean, they were like, do you have any questions for us? And she was like, oh, I just don't know where to start. Yeah, because you don't want to ask anything because you really don't give a fuck. So, <clears throat> so they all get back to their room. I'll finish with them because I ain't done with them yet. And we're going to Puerto Rico, right? And listen, fun fact, I went to Puerto Rico last summer. The hotel they're staying at is the same hotel with some of my friends stayed. I was like, oh my goodness, I know that hotel. I knew the lobby when they would check. I was like, I know that hotel. Anyway, um, nice place too, nice hotel. Um, so we do all of that. We get on the plane. And some, some shit went down on the plane. Now, of course, out of all the things we want to see, we don't get to see that. But it's, and, and here's the thing. So when they were packing to go, once again, Lindsay is talking to Mark about, does he speak Spanish? Because that's the language. I've been to Puerto Rico so many times, and you're going to love it, and it's great, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Now, Mark has ain't never been to Puerto Rico. He started talking about, well, can I get a burger? And she was like, you don't need no burgers. You're not going to be eating a burger in Puerto Rico. Hell, I ate a burger in Puerto Rico, girl. If you don't go sit your ass down somewhere. So when I heard the story, I believe what happened. So allegedly... What had happened was, at some point when they landed or on the plane, they were all talking or whatever, and Lindsay made a comment to Elijah about, do you speak Spanish? And he was like, no, 
Like, I know Spanish. I don't speak it very well, but I'm going to speak English because that's what I speak. And Lindsay proceeded to, to tell him how that's disrespectful because that is not their native language and we need to be speaking Spanish. Elijah Wan responded by telling her, I'm not your husband and I'm not your child. Don't talk to me like I am. I'm going to speak English because that's what I speak. Turn around and talk to your husband. From there, it got heated and... He claims that she was like, so what, you want to fight about it? She said that he got aggressive. She didn't use the word aggressive, but he did whatever. And that he sort of brought up the whole fighting thing. Now, because I saw you do it to your husband about, do you speak Spanish? I absolutely believe that you did it to Elijah Juan. I do. And at the end of the day, Lindsay, if you don't speak Spanish, you don't speak Spanish. Which, which, what are we going to do? Listen to the Rosetta Stone on the flight over? Girl, if I don't speak Spanish, I don't speak Spanish. What are you talking about? And listen, I've been to Puerto Rico twice, and I am not fluent in any parts of Spanish, but I got along fine. I was able to get what I needed to get, go where I needed to go, buy what I wanted to buy. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy what I needed to enjoy. And yes, their native language is Spanish, but guess what? You can still get around without speaking Spanish. So, and here's how I know it went down the way Elijah Ron said it went down, or close enough to it. Because Mark ended up apologizing to Elijah Vaughn and was basically like, listen, I don't want this one thing to be the reason why, you know, we got, you know, we got, basically, we got to go through this whole process together. You know, we just had a little bump in the road. You know, what can we do to get past this? And to Elijah Vaughn's credit, he was like, listen, I don't need nothing. Let's just move on. Let bygones be bygones. It happened. I appreciate you coming to me and talking to me about it. And let's just move forward. Um, Lindsay stayed up in the room and Kate, Elijah Wan's wife was like, yeah, I'm going to need a minute. I'm not as forgiving as my husband. I'm going to need a minute. So then Jasmina and Mike later on that night, child, they done got into a little bit of a tiff because she asked him how the day was. And he was like, well, for the exception of the little, you know, the little, little situation with Elijah Wan and them, you know, everything was cool, but it's to be expected that there's going to be some sort of a bump in the road. And she was like, I don't think so. I disagree. And he was like, well, what do you mean? Like, she was like, well, I think if people are respectful and people treat each other with respect, I don't think, I don't think that's, that's, that's like, you know, going to the norm. And she was like, yeah, but the reality is, I mean, he said, yeah, but we don't know each other until we get to know each other. I won't know what your boundaries are. I won't know what is a what is an issue for you until we get to know each other. So until we get to know each other better, we they're going to be some, you know, conflict. And she was like, well, I just agree to disagree on that. And then she got up and got a shower and she had like a little attitude. And I was like, you're doing too much because his point was valid. Like you have a group of eight people who don't know each other from a hole in the wall, never been around each other, never spent time with each other. There are going to be conflicts. Now, it doesn't have to be a fight. It doesn't have to rise to the occasion of being a fight, but there's going to be some conflicts. I thought you was doing a lot, Jasmina. I think you were already on high alert because of what his sister said, and you was you was on 10. Um, so, Alyssa and Chris. So, it comes time for them to share a room, and... Um, Alyssa is once again telling him how she's not comfortable sharing a room with him because when they were talking about going to Puerto Rico, he was like trying to make it work. He was like, oh, okay, well, what do you want to do when we get there? She was like, I just want to go to the beach. He was like, okay, well, you know, I want to, you know, explore and I want to go on some adventures. And he was like, I mean, she was like, okay, well, you can do that, but I'm going to the beach. He was like, okay, well, I could go to the beach. And now she's talking about something. Well, I think he's just being, he's just yesing me to death now. He's just yesing me to death. And I'm like, no, he's trying to freaking make this marriage work that you clearly don't want to work. So they're talking, and he's telling her, he's like, listen, I feel like you've already made up your mind that you don't want this. And just be honest and tell me, because if that's what you're telling me, then I won't keep trying. But don't sit here and make it seem like that there's a hope or there's some sort of a percentage that maybe if we spend enough time together, we'll make this work if it's never going to work. And that's not what's going to happen. Like, be honest with me about that. And, um, she, and he was, she was like, so you, so what do you say? You saying I'm a liar? You saying I don't want this to work? I'm a liar. He was like, 
Yeah, I'm saying you don't want this to work. You've made up your mind that this isn't going to work. I'm not doing this with him. I'm not having this conversation on camera. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. He's calling me a liar, and I'm not doing it. Then she says, and I can't believe that you told my sister and my, I mean, told my mom and my best friend, um, why would you tell my mom about He was like, what, what was I supposed to do, lie? They asked me how everything went, and I told them the truth. I, what was I supposed to say? He's like, I wasn't going to lie to your mom. She was like, I can't believe you said that. That was so disrespectful of you. That was so rude of you to tell my family that. And I'm like, what, what, what? so he's supposed to lie for you? He don't even know you, ma'am. You have given him absolutely no reason to lie for you. He told his truth, and he was within his rights to tell his truth. Girl, if you don't go sit your ass down somewhere, I said, Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Nope. Not, nope. Not the answer. So, um, that was pretty much how the episode ended. And like I said, I'm going to come back to where I started this whole conversation. I honestly feel like they need to really let Chris out of this. Because at this point, I feel bad for Chris. He was crying. He was upset. He was confused. He was hurt. And there's really no good reason for it. He's done nothing to deserve the way he's being treated. And again, I get making a TV show, but at a certain point, baby, let these people tap out because this is ridiculous. At least with Chris and Paige, I mean, they had drama, but at least with Paige, she kept coming back, okay? Chris would pull her away, push her away, pull her back, push her back. They did the back and forth. Alyssa is giving nothing. Alyssa is giving nothing. Now, let's be clear. This is only my third season, so I don't know what the other... Uh, 11 seasons looked like and maybe there were situations that were this bad before but I, I can only speak for what I'm looking at and this it, it, this is ridiculous anyway y'all let me know what y'all think drop it in the comments peace